Since the end of the financial crisis, regulators have been hard at work trying to make our markets safer, trying to make sure that isolated stress events do not spread and become market contagion. That's the topic of today's conversation. I'm Tony Carfang with Treasury Strategies, and I'm joined by Scott Musial, another colleague at Treasury Strategies. And we're going to assess that, uh, that topic today, and it parallels the findings of a white paper that we recently published, and we will show you the link on, on how to actually download that white paper. Yeah, the bottom line is generally the financial regulations that are not only processed of being implemented are working reasonably well. You know, we've seen with the, with the Greek crisis, with the China syndrome, uh, with the flash ca crash in treasuries, problems in the markets that did not spread. And that's a very good thing. However, we see three key problems on the horizon uh, that we'd like to really drill down on today. Very simply, the demand for high quality collateral, treasury bills, is increasing exponentially as a result of the regulations. Number two, the supply of these assets are, is, is, is flat right now, but will fall as the Fed unwinds its quantitative easing. And then finally, there's a misallocation of assets as a result of uh, operational bottlenecks in the system uh, and other technical factors that we'll discuss. So the real question is, uh, are there enough Treasury securities to go around to meet all of the requirements required by regulators? and if not, or if the supply and demand equation is a little too tight, does that mean that stress events could actually be transmitted and turned into contagion, quite contrary to what the objectives of the regulations are? So, Scott, could you take us through the three points? Absolutely, Tony. So, if we begin with the demand element, um, we've had multiple regulations basically increase the requirements for institutions to hold high-quality assets, usually for collateral, but also for other purposes. We could spend a lot of time listing them out, but there's Basel III, there are the SEC money market reforms, and there's also Dodd-Frank. And the net effect of a lot of these are more collateral requirements, and even the creation of new collateral requirements almost out of thin air. Um, and this has created a pretty dramatic change in demand. And while we're five years after a lot of these reforms enacted, we're also pretty new into these actually being implemented in the market. And the effects have been so dramatic that places like ISDA and DTCC have already expressed the concerns about this dramatic spike in the demand for high quality assets. So if we turn to the other side of the equation, Tony, is the supply okay? And we need to make sure that there's enough supply to satisfy this. And what we're seeing is that after pretty dramatic growth in high quality assets, very specifically U.S. Treasuries, um, that's tapering off. And we're actually seeing other sources um, are going to dra dramatically decline soon. Um, U.S. Treasuries with maturities under a year are about just over $3 trillion, And that's usually what's used for collateral and other similar purposes. Um, that's not going to grow like it did in the last seven to ten years. Um, we're also seeing that excess reserves at the Federal Reserve um, that banks hold, um, that is going to drop off as well. Right now it's over two trillion and the Fed is expecting to wind that down to a hundred billion. And that's going to force banks who use that for Basel III purposes to look for other sources. And then finally, um, money market reforms. There's a lot of concern that the changes there are going to spur investors to take funds held previously in private funds and move them in the treasury funds. And that's going to be some estimate around $400 billion. That's going to create a need for the treasury funds to buy $400 billion more in treasury securities. And that's going to take um, available assets in the pool that can be used for collateral and other applications out of there and into the treasury funds. Finally, Tony, when we talk about bottlenecks, so we have a great supply out there, or we have some supply, we have concerns about it, but we also got to get it to the users, and we're already seeing concerns there. Um, one of the big issues that we're seeing is um, big holders of assets aren't as willing to hypothecate as they will. Some of that's because of regulatory requirements, and some of that is just a preference. And that means that, um, that hypothecation and a multiplier effect that's not there. So that's a drain on the pool. We're also seeing large institutions just 
hold on for buffers, and that could um, be settlement concerns just to have more. And that could also be their concern about um, getting ready for stress events. Um, and finally, when you look at the Boca rule, a big impact of that is fewer and fewer firms are less willing to be active market makers. And that was a critical source of liquidity and an access point for some of those mid-tier financial institutions, large corporate treasury, and other institutions that don't have direct assets to capital markets. So what we're seeing is that large institutions are likely going to be okay. They're going to have cap, uh, collateral, other assets that they need. They'll be fine in those stress situations. What we're concerned about is that those, those other tiers of investors and market participants, and when the margin calls come and they don't have the access they once did, they're going to have to unwind their positions. That's going to create additional downward pressures on prices in stress events, probably more margin calls, and then all of a sudden, a stress event turns, as you said, into contagion, turns into crisis. And th these other participants that are likely to lose access to collateral would be corporate treasurers, mm -hmm. uh, mid-sized institutional investors, all sorts of mid-sized financial institutions, broker-dealers, commercial banks, who rely on upstream intermediaries uh, for, for, for their daily flows yep. uh, could, will be the ones losing the access and most harmed by this. Exactly. Well, so as, as we put this together and, and ask ourselves, what can we do? I actually see three possible solutions here. One is the treasuries, the central banks or uh, the governments around the world could simply issue more government securities, uh, short-term government securities to meet the collateral requirements. Uh, in fact, though, that doesn't work. The uh, TBAC, the Treasury Borrowing Advisory Committee, has, re has recently been publishing warnings about the, uh, the, the, the supply and demand of Treasury securities. And in effect, Scott, what they've said is if the U.S. Treasury were to issue more Treasury bills, that would mean they would be issuing less uh, 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 Treasury securities further up the yield curve and actually create more serious bottlenecks farther out on the yield curve, so, so the cure in that case, according to Tabak, is worse than the disease. That's not good. Okay. The second option, you know, we have a limited supply of, of, of collateral and high-quality assets, and under these guidelines, we have percentage formulas and everything, so you can actually compute out that that supports a certain level of economic activity. So what we could do is slow the growth of GDP, or actually make it negative, until we have a supply and demand balance. Now, that means lowering qualities of living and, 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 and things like that, which obviously we don't want to do. So, so the first two options, uh, and some would argue that the second option is actually playing out right now, uh, it's these requirements that are retarding economic growth. Uh, third option would be a, a correction of the regulations. Well, 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 we believe that the regulations for the most part, not entirely, but for the most part, are directionally correct. Uh, the magnitude in some cases has gone too far and, and, and need, need, needs to be revised. So, you know, of, of, of those three possible solutions, they're clearly uh, altering the range, which will take a long time. Yeah, exactly. When you think about that, Tony, there's actually some more immediate solution that we can look at. Um, and that's looking at the functional equivalency of other assets to what's accepted as collateral. And this is something the exchange and the clearinghouses could do today. And regulators could make quick changes that don't material change the reg regulations. What would be an example? So an example, if you look at treasury money funds, um, they hold treasury assets in cash um, and are as safe or perhaps even safer than the underlying treasury bills. So what we'd recommend is that they could be used in the same way. They're allowed in certain cases today, but it's limited and it's usually haircut, but they should be treated the same and that could be a quick shot in the arm for some of the problems that we're seeing. Well, that's a great solution. So, in, in summary, uh, the objective of the financial regulations has been to uh, improve the safety of the markets, and we think generally that is happening. However, the, the implementation of these regs is still early, and if, if you extrapolate out current trends, we see problems down the road. Uh, we've talked about that, and we deal with that in our white paper, you know, please feel free to download that, that white paper. Uh, and we see a two-part solution here, really, then, Scott. I, I, I think we would agree that longer term, we need to modify the regulations because you know, they've gone just a step or two 
or three <laughs> too far. Uh, but in the short term, uh, if, we, if we examine the functional equivalency argument that you, that you made, mm -hmm. things like making treasury money market mutual funds equivalent to the actual treasury bill itself, and I'm sure that, that there are other functional equivalents that, that, that we could identify in the marketplace, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that would provide hundreds of billions of dollars of short term relief. Thank you very much for joining us. Again, Tony Carfang and Scott Musial of Treasury Strategies. We're consultants in treasury payments and liquidity. So if you're a corporate treasurer or a financial institution uh, uh, officer and have any issues in the area of treasury and payments and liquidity, feel free to give Scott or, or myself a call. Thank you very much.